This is Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas, saying of the day, never be limited by other people's limitations on imagination. If they, if they limit themselves on imagination, they're not thinking big. And it goes back to my old, one of my other favorite saying, dream no little dreams. If people have limited imagination, they're not going to dream big dreams. Today, uh, I, I, first of all, I want to start out that uh, in Iceland, and, you know, I, I talked about last year when we had a trip. I went to a trip in Iceland with former members of Congress. And we went, the uh, first day we were there, we went to the Blue Lagoon. And uh, you go swimming, and, and it's warm water, hot water. Uh, not scalding or anything, but the uh, they've, they've had in the last 72 hours uh, 1,500 earthquakes, mm-hmm. and two of them were above a 5.0. And that, so they closed the Blue Lagoon, first time it's been closed, and uh, they, they have hundreds of people there. And it's sulfur water, it's warm, it's supposed to be good for you. I don't know, but it, it's, it's warm and, and fun to be in. But uh, they closed a, a town, evacuated one of the towns that had 4,000 people and is not but about 20 miles from the international airport at Reykjavik where, uh, where all the planes land. And uh, so it's a serious situation, and they think they're going to have volcanoes. The, the land, uh, there's a golf course that's been closed because they had uh, two- and three-foot cracks and, and you know you can step off in the crack and, and uh, be and be gone. Uh, but a, a volcano is not something that you mess with. The the molten in some some areas will travel 450 miles an hour down a mountain. And uh, so you know, and you have the types of volcanoes. One was Mount St. Helens just blew up. No one knew. It didn't give a lot of warning and killed over 50 people. Most of those have never been found. And then you have like the ones in Hawaii that just bubble up and uh, gradually go down to the sea and destroy any towns that are in their path. And where they pour into the sea, the steam is unbelievable because of the the heat from the molten rock. And uh, 80% of the land in, in the world came from volcanoes over billions of years and so it's uh uh it's something to to bear in mind and watch you know i always tell people when you've got problems and mother nature's coming along and floods or whatever you know they all say don't you don't turn around don't drown Uh, you don't want to get in a fight with mother nature because uh, you're probably going to lose that fight but in in uh, iceland they're having a very difficult time uh because of the the earthquakes and they know that the volcanoes are nearby. When I was in Iceland, we looked at several volcanoes and got fairly close to them. But at night, they're beautiful because you can see the streams of red molten coming down the mountain. And uh, they're, uh, I, and I did notice on the Internet, you can get a tour. There are certain people that are tour guides to volcanoes. And now this erupting and everything, they're charging $550, you know, for a two-hour trip, uh, you know, I, I'd I'd hate to pay somebody to bury me, uh, you know, and you might get buried in the uh, explosion if, if it uh, comes about. Uh, uh, less than 15 years ago, they had some uh, volcanoes in Iceland that got, uh, that, that did blow, and uh, they got so much ash in the air that the airport had to be shut down for a week. And then they had to shut down the airports in uh, uh, Great Britain and, and Scotland and Ireland. So it's a, it's a real threat, and uh, it's just amazing the strength of something like it. To go 450 miles an hour, I'd, you know, I thought they might go 10 or 20 or something like that, but uh, they, they have lightning speed. We encourage you to uh, listen to past episodes of Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas. Chancellor, I went back and uh, grabbed a clip uh, to share with our audience things they can then listen to. And I found this uh, from last year from Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. There are a lot of people in this country that are struggling. Not everyone has good parents like I had. 
Um, and we were never poor. We were just, you know, middle class. But, we, you know, I, I had to watch pennies. Yeah, I mean, I had to pay. Yeah, we had to watch our pennies. And, you know, and spam was a, you know, one day a week meal. And, and hot dogs and beans were fine. And I was happy with all that, although I'm not crazy about spam anymore. I'll eat plenty of hot dogs. But we all can rise above where we came from. Some of us need a little bit more help than others. All of us, all of us need a mentor. All of us need to make a few mistakes to learn. I sure made a lot of mine, thank God and uh, learn from them hopefully and 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 it's not we, we we don't need a lucky break you know that was a great episode it he didn't talk about his politics or school choice or anything it, we talked about him and about who he is and how he got where he is and i think one of the funniest things in his story is that he was in the running to be the weatherman at uh, the top station tv station in washington dc and uh, he came in second. The guy that won was Al Roker, who later became a national guy. And uh, they called uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Dan Patrick, called him back and said, uh, you know, you came in second, Al Roker, we're going with him. We sure you know, sure wish you did short uh, sports. And he said, I do sports. I do sports and weather. It's a little <laughs> station in Scranton. And so they hired him, and, and he started doing the sports. Then uh, one of the Houston TV, one of the networks in Houston saw him and brought him to Houston. And that's how he got to be good friends with uh, some of the Houston Oilers and some of the people in, in Houston. It's a great episode. Go back uh, and listen to it. It's interesting, Chancellor, because I, I draw the, there's a similarity between his story and uh, Senator Cruz, who you also spoke with, and both talking about having great parents. They, they did, and, and you know that, that is so important. Uh, but not everyone has great parents. And so instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself that you didn't, you just need to work hard and, and stay focused on what's best for you as you move forward. Chancellor, I think I remember you saying you are not a coffee drinker. Is that correct? I, I don't drink coffee at all. Uh, I did in law school some, and I just didn't like it. And the, the thing I found in politics, if you drink a lot of coffee, you're going to make a lot of stops. <laughs> You know, and, and you don't have time to make a lot of stops. Yeah, 45% of us are drinking coffee we don't actually like. I, I saw that study. They uh, interviewed 5,000 people, and they had blind test them to see. And so th they asked them, what's your favorite coffee? And, and then they tested them on that, and 45% were drinking coffee they don't like, you know, and uh, they wanted a lighter uh, blend and so it's uh you know the study also said people average you know two a day two drink, two cups of coffee a day well i mean somebody's drinking four because i don't drink any but uh the, in drinking two cups a day the average spending on uh, coffee was like fifty dollars a month now i don't know where they're buying their coffee if, if you're doing two a day at 60 and you're spending 50, you know, I mean, you're getting it pretty cheap or you're just probably just making it at home. But, uh, you know, you go get a cup of coffee someplace, it can cost 7 $8. You can always use one of my favorite sayings when somebody charges something like that. I'll say, uh, you know, I, this un unbelievable last guy that robbed me had a gun instead of a cup of coffee. <laughs> sometimes they'll laugh. Sometimes they don't catch it. My old friend used to say, did I break a window? Yeah, did I break some? <laughs> what, what else have I bought? Uh, again, recapping that, 45% of us are drinking coffee we don't actually like. Uh, broken bones. Have you broke a bone? There's an interesting I, thing about what are the ones we break the most. Yeah, I have. They, they had a uh, breaking arm or ankle or a toe. I broke a toe. One time the burglar alarm at my house went off in the middle of the night and I jumped up. I didn't have my gun beside the bed. I went running in the dark into the closet and broke my left toe, uh, my little one. And uh, golly, it took, you know, it took a while to get, uh, I, I uh, went out and had to get some special shoes, you know, uh, or either wear a boot, and I didn't want to wear a boot. And uh, it it took a, several weeks for that thing to heal, and it's still kind of crooked. But uh, breaking a bone, you know, if you break a bone and get a cast, something like that, and somebody says, what happened? They'll interrupt your story to tell you their yeah. story yeah. about uh, how they broke a bone and how it was uh, 
uh, troublesome. You take somebody that breaks an ankle or, you know, they've got to be on crutches, and uh, that's that's uh, no easy task. Did you happen to watch the Florida State-Miami game yesterday? That court yes. quarterback looked like he did something bad to his left arm. They put it in the – I don't know what the result was. He, he, he was in deep pain. Yeah. You could tell that. And uh, they thought that he broke it at the wrist and also on the upper arm also. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a heck of a lick. There were a lot of exciting games on, <clears throat> on Saturday. And uh, my Red Raiders beat Kansas right at the end of the game on a field goal. And uh, there was just, uh, you know, I thought Ole Miss was really good until they played Georgia. And I think they are good. But uh, Georgia, it was, you know, 50-something. to I mean, it wasn't close. That program at Kansas is turning around. Oh, yeah. They they used to, you know, only have good basketball teams. But uh, they they were rated last week 17th in the nation. And that coach has done a great job. Can you can you tell us anything about Red Raider basketball, which is which is starting? Well, just starting, and uh, they had uh, game yesterday with San Jose, uh, and uh, they had A and M Commerce earlier in the week. You know the the, the Division One lower level or the Division Two schools, the way they make their budget, they don't get television money, is they get paid to go play someone. Like if A uh, and M Commerce probably get paid a hundred thousand. Uh, they played A and M College Station in Texas Tech in Kentucky, you know, and and that, that was their first three games in about five days, mm-hmm. and boy, that's tough. <laughs> and uh, but if they if they raised three to five hundred thousand with their opponents, that that's their budget, mm-hmm. and uh, they have to stay within that budget. But in if you look at Division One sports, the Power five conferences have great contracts. Uh, SEC and Big Ten have the best contracts, and uh, Big 12 will have next. But the, all, all of those will make anywhere from 40 to $60 million a year off their TV contracts. And so it keeps their program in great shape. Speaking of college athletics, what did you think of the timing of the Jim Harborough suspension at the University of Michigan? He was got off the airplane to find out he wasn't coaching on the sidelines. He got off plane to find that out, but they knew pretty well that something was going to happen. And uh, a story about a coach cheating on signals, is everybody talks about it. On all the talk shows, especially the sports talk show, everybody has an opinion. And uh, the result of that is that uh, you're going to have more pressure on the uh, commissioner of the Big Ten to do something about it. And so they filed to try to get a lawsuit. They tried to get him enjoined from, you know, making him not being able to coach uh, that game. And uh, and it was, you know, they did. The judge didn't do it. He said he'd hear it next week. Mm-hmm. So they're they're trying to get him, you know, free so he can coach the last two or three games. Um, you know, I don't know what'll happen, but uh, courts don't like to get involved in uh, in C. AA, you know, policies. And um, they, as one judge said, you know, we don't want to screw it up. They'll, they'll do that on their own. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> Chancellor, uh, I know you love a stupid criminal story. Did you, hear, did you see the one about the guy with the three parrots? Yeah, he had three parrots. He had uh, one on his shoulder and two on the brim of his hat. He had a big hat. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. His name was Hector. Uh, Rios, and he goes in a McDonald's, and he robbed people coming out, and he had had those three parrots on. That's going to be pretty easy to identify that that uh, criminal. You know what did he look like? Was there anything unusual about him? And I had a guy one time at Lubbock Country Club hit me up, and he said I met a cousin of yours, and I said where, and he says in Olton. We were playing poker up there. We played poker at the fire station on a certain night. I said, well, what? Well, he's about 5'10". You know, he goes on and on and t- trying. And, and he said, oh, yeah, he had one arm. Well, you know, hell, I, I mean, if he'd told me that first, I'd known it's one arm Jimmy, you know, Jimmy George, who uh, when he died, he, he's the one that had a real estate 
business, and he had a real estate sign, Jimmy George, that was uh, spot welded to his casket. So that way, if they ever dig him up, they'll know that you know he was trying to sell some property. Can you tell us again how the story of you've told it before of how he lost the arm? Yeah, he had uh, uh, he was in a car. He'd been state champion, Golden Gloves, and uh, then he was in a car wreck. And uh, a week before the car wreck, his uh, nephew, W. George, had dropped the trophy and knocked off the left arm. You know, those, those old boxing trophies have them kind of hunched over with their fists clenched and, you know, like they're really into a fight. And he dropped his plane with it, and he wasn't but four or five years old. He was playing with it and dropped, knocked off the left arm. And the next week, Jimmy was in a wreck. And it cut his arm off at the exact same spot. <laughs> and Dubby's dad, Dub, told uh, Jimmy when he came to, just be glad he didn't knock the head off that trophy. <laughs> you know, compassionate group. And uh, so he he, uh, he he went through life uh, as a state Golden Gloves champ. He, he can tell people, you know, I, I was Golden Gloves champ, and they're looking at him, and he's got one arm, and they think, God, he must have been quick. <laughs> But uh, that's when he had two. But the friend that saw him to started to start decided to describe to describe him by how tall he was. Yeah, he talked about how tall he was, and he had on boots, and you know, cowboy hat. And yeah, that's a lot of my relatives, you know. And, <laughs> but if he had if he just told me he had one arm, I you know, I'd known real quick who he was. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I've kind of wondered about that guy. That's the best he could come up with. Again, we encourage you to go listen to past episodes and to follow us on Instagram at the Best Storyteller Podcast. Our website is uh, hanspodcast.com, and you can email us info at hanspodcast.com. Chancellor, another clip from a past episode. Uh, here is um, Randy Mahomes, of course, Patrick Mahomes' mother. His junior year, right before he started, he told me he didn't want to play football anymore. Uh, and. Wow. I talked him into staying only because I knew he would be so bored um, um, sitting in the stands with the students and doing that. So I talked him into staying and sometimes I'm like, should I have? I mean, I love where he's at now, but, um, you know, seeing your kid live their dream is priceless. That's Randy Mahomes. You can listen to that full episode by going back through uh, our episodes of Kent Hance, the best storyteller in Texas. I found it funny that given all of Patrick's success right now, Super Bowl MVP, she still wonders if she had forced think, him to play. I think she made the right decision <laughs> by, you know, by all means. Uh, here's a kid that, you know, could play every sport, played baseball, basketball, ran track. And he was in a small town. If he had been a larger town, the coaches would have just pounded on him, just pick one sport, mm -hmm. and uh, which would have made it uh, more difficult. But, you know, I asked her in that after the interview uh, as we were wrapping up, and, and I asked her, when did you think he was going to be a super athlete? And she said, well, when he was five. You know, that's pretty <laughs> early. Uh, when he was five, he, he, you know, they played a soccer game, and on the way home, he talked to her about it, and he said, how'd I do? She said, you did great. And he was a five-year-old, but they put him in with the seven-year-olds. And he said, well, Mom, you know, we won seven to nothing. I scored all seven goals. <laughs> she said right then, she knew not only was he good, but he had the confidence. You know, he, he knew he was good. Mm -hmm. And that uh, he was at the Texas Tech-Kansas game yesterday. And, uh, of course, all the Tech fans were you know, proud of that. And the Kansas fans wouldn't be mad. They they like him so much for being the leader of the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. that, so that uh, that's a good episode, and uh, learned a lot about him, about his mom, and the uh, ups and downs that everybody has in life. Go back and listen to it. It's very very good. And it's not a lot about football, just like uh, Dan Patrick and and uh, Ted Cruz were not a lot about politics. It's about who they are, you know, and things that interest them and how. How they got where they are. Um, I noticed in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, I mentioned Scranton a while ago because that's that's where Lieutenant Governor got his start on uh, television. He was a weatherman and the sportsman. And that uh, they they have a deal where a bowling alley is uh, turkeys 
uh, for for uh, the homeless or Turk. Uh, what they do, you you pay five dollars and you bow with a frozen turkey, <laughs> and and if you in in the turkeys go to the food bank, and if you uh, get a strike, then they give you. Five dollars, so you don't have to pay five dollars. You get five dollars if you can get a strike with a, uh, a frozen turkey, and I, I, you know, it's pretty uh, imagination uh, plus imagination on the part of the bowling alley owner that he had come up with that. But that was a it was a big deal that they they're having. I think it's next week. The the bowling it 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 was in the news. And the other story that got my attention uh, that day last week when I read about binge drinkers. And with wealthy nations, binge drinkers in the United States are 10th. And Denmark's number one. And it's too dark and cold and, I guess, depressing in Denmark. But among women, U.S. was fourth. Hmm. Uh, and that... Uh, so the study said that more women, you know, binge drinking uh, than than men. Was that defined uh, as six drinks? I believe. Yeah. It's, uh, binge drinking, right? Six drinks, and uh, you know, it's not social drink. If you have six vodka and tonics or six beers, that's not social drinking uh, <laughs> uh, under anyone's definition. There was a story came out, uh, a guy by the name of Paul Mendel, and this uh, really made you feel good that w- what can happen in the United States about dream no little dreams. Uh, he uh, got a job working at McDonald's when he was 16, and he's worked for him ever since, and he got some franchise. He wound up, he owns 31 McDonald's. This guy's rich. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he did... 31 McDonald's is, uh, you know, big time. And that uh, if you can't make money on that, then you're not going to make money on anything. But he started out flipping burgers. Yep. Worked that his was his up. first job, and he worked up well enough to become a manager, and then he went in and started trying to buy them and get a franchise. And he started getting them and did so well that he was on the preferred list. Hey, if somebody tells you they own 31 McDonald's, you don't have to figure, are they rich? Or, yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Don't worry about them. Uh, Christian Dior came up with a deal, and then they started announcing it uh, a couple of weeks ago, perfume for babies. You know, I don't know about that. I mean, it's $230 a, a bottle, uh, and little babies, when they're cleaned and just bathed and everything, they smell great. But I will tell you this. When they uh, go to the bathroom, they can stink worse than a herd of goats. <laughs> I had a, a lady on a plane one time. She had a, a little baby is about three months old. And she asked me to hold it while she took her two-year-old to the bathroom. And while she, was, she left, and when she did, that kid's looking at me, the little baby, and I'm you know, kind of talking to it and got his attention. It's not screaming or crying or anything. And his face started turning red. <laughs> it was straining. And I knew what was happening. I went, oh, my word. <laughs> and so when the woman came back, boy, you know, you get within two or three rows, you can, you know, know what was happening. And she said, well, you know, y'all had a little accident. Yeah, you did have a little <laughs> accident, you know. she. So I took care of the two-year-old while she took the other kid back Got them cleaned up. I, I, I felt like some somebody asked. I got off the plane. One of the staff members picked me up. Love them. Said, "What have you been doing?" I said, "I've been babysitting all day. You know, <laughs> helping people out. Traveling with kids is tough." Yeah, and I always, every once in a while, see some young woman. They'll have two or three kids. My daughter, her kids, the toughest age is when they were one, three, and five. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. there's constant movement. Yeah. If you got a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old, you don't know where they're going because they don't know where they're going. You just got to be, you know, you got to run a, a zone press uh, for a defense. Uh, you can't do man-to-man or that one of them, at least one, will get away from you. 
I'm just picturing you in my head holding that impet. Well, and that kid had started, it, it just it turned a bright red. I knew what was happening. I, you little kid, cut that out, you know. Well, your mama gets back. Uh, wasn't, wasn't anything I could say or do. And, and one guy next to me said, golly, you know. And uh, I said, yeah, it's, you know, not, not my kid. I'm just trying to help this lady out. Uh, that kid probably voted for you. Yeah, maybe. You know, you can help somebody. I was between uh, Andrews and, and uh, Seminole, and uh, there was a guy that had a flat, and I pulled over to help him fix flat, and I was talking to him about where he's from. He said he's from Seminole. I think it's good. I'll get his vote and everything. And I talked to him a while, and I said, uh, you know, I sure appreciate your vote. I'm running. I gave him a card and everything. Told him I was running for state senate, and he said, well, I, I'm not eligible to vote in Texas. I said, you said you're from Seminole. He said, I'm from Seminole, Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, I spent, you know, 20, 30 minutes helping him change that flat. And I went, oh, okay. That's one for the team. Yeah. Any Anytime you're campaigning, you'll find some people that will talk your leg off. Maybe they don't even live in your district. And uh, you learn a lot. Saying of the day was never be limited by other people's limited imagination. You know, dream no little dreams. Dream big. Have big in that imagination. That's important.